Okay, wherever I have arrived, welcome to another Tuesday Night Shiur. Um, I'm very glad to see everyone here today. Very nice, even though one or two didn't show up, but it's okay. They'll hear it online. If they don't, then I'm going to be upset. Now, only for those one or two. Everyone else? No man yet. What's the switch parasha? Does anyone know? Nitzavim. Nitzavim. Matem Nitzavim. Ayam kolchem. Lifnei Hashem elokechem. Very, very, very uh, crucial parasha. This week's parasha is the last of the mitzvot. The last of the mitzvot. And then comes Rosh Hashanah. Next week is Rosh Shana. Next week is the beginning of the new year. We'll talk about it next week. She wore on Tuesday. Because Rosh Hashanah comes in Wednesday night. It will most probably be posted online because the camera guy that puts it up online takes at least two, three days to put it up, whatever his case is. But before we start, does anyone have any... Uh, I know we have a different question segment, but either way, does anyone have something that they want to uh, address right now? Like this, we can get into the topic. Only one, one question. No? No? Oh, Thoughts, okay. Okay. What you say? Is it true that there's a hack to Rosh Hashanah? Is it true that there's a hack to Rosh First, we have to know what Rosh Hashanah is in order to reach the hack. We get a good judgment. But what is Rosh Hashanah? The head of the year. The start of the year. Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year. You're 100% right. But what does that mean? Why doesn't it say Rishon Hashanah, the beginning of the year? Why is it the head of the year? The most important part. What's the most important part? I'm going to say the head is the most important part. Of the? Of the body. Of the body. So what does it have to do with Rosh Hashanah? I can't speak like this, Yoshua. You have to You have to forgive me. You have to forgive me. Thank you. Huh? Why is it called Rosh Hashanah? It's the month that determines the whole year. It's the month, it's the day. It's the day that determines the whole year. It's the day. And then, of course, the month goes on and uh, takes its toll and, and makes a stamp. Okay, so we'll get into that. We'll get into what you just said. And then, hopefully, later we'll, we'll reach, we'll get to what you asked. This week's Paja has something very significant. Very significant. I think it's the stamp of why we have to keep Torah Mitzvot. Hashem writes, now keeping Torah Mitzvot means even things that are difficult for us. Not just things that are easy. I do see people working on themselves. I do see it. I do want to call it out. I'm not going to say my names. But I do see it. I'm not blind. Um... And Hazak uh, keep it up. Keep on working on yourselves. Keep on getting stronger because you're not doing it for me. You're not definitely doing it for anyone else. You're doing it for yourself and you're doing it because the Creator commanded us because He knows what's good for, for us, right? So don't ever feel down. Always feel up. Feeling down is kfira. Is saying, I don't believe in Hashem. Because when a person feels down, what is he actually saying? I don't agree with God's judgment. Why is it like that? Because if you would agree with God's judgment, would you ever feel down? Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Let's say you were stuck in a boat. And the boat is starting to sink. And your hand got caught. The only way out is for you to chop off your hand. Okay. Would you chop it off? Yeah. Would you be sad about it? In the moment, no. But really, still I lost my hand. Right, no. I wouldn't. There's your answer. I would do it. Die. Okay, so you would die even better. One less no shoot on this world. <laughs> Why? Because if you're not willing to cut off your hand to live, then you're not willing to live. So no one needs you, you're a waste of air. But if you're willing, of course, this is metaphorically, chas shalom, of course. Someone it would not be willing, it would be willing to cut off his hand. That means he is happy with the decision, even though later on he might not even feel bad, but he'll feel like Oh, I, I, I feel in a sense of, not a handicap, but I, I, I'm, unf- I'm not functional to do things. And what gives me chizuk, you see the, the soldiers of Klal Yisrael, no hands, no feet, they're so proud, they're so ge'ed, they're so, walk up with their chest, like I lost all this for us, not for me. 
This, all this pain and what you, what you think is pain, and you see them getting married and walking with those plastic feet on the chuppah, it's such a beautiful scene, it's amazing. And they, and they uplift themselves, and you, because the deal doesn't go through, you're going crazy. That's why you're going crazy. The guy, which is 16, 18 years old, 19 years old, sacrificing his life for you, which lives in America, and you're upset, that comes from a deep down of not really believing in Hashem. Now, to reach that madriga of always saying, no matter what happens, I believe in Hashem, and I know it comes from Hashem, don't get me wrong, it's extremely a, a high madriga, but if we're not going to start, we're never going to get there. That's the point. The point is not to say, oh, Rabbi, I'm never going to get there, forget about it. No! Don't worry about if you're going to get there. Start! Things don't go your way, little things. I know it's from Hashem, I need to be upset. Vaiter, continue, go, continue going, continue going, continue living. Until you're going to reach such a point in your life that regardless what happens to you, I know it's from God. That's how it, that's, it's called a building up of a certain tolerance in order to gain so much more. That's how it starts. Okay? <clears throat> now, in this week's parasha, we see that Hashem says to, to the Jewish people, you're going into Eretz Yisrael, going to the Holy Land, and I'm making a treaty, and I'm giving you this land because I promised Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, and I made a treaty with them, and don't think I only made the treaty with them. I made the treaty with you, and for the generations after you. Moshe Rabbeinu tells us to Klal Yisrael, to the Jewish people. Hashem made a treaty with every single one of us. He said, let's say if one day we're going to say, we don't want Torah Mitzvot. It's too late. He made a treaty with us. The covenant is done. It's done with blood. You can't run away. You can't. As much as you run away of your responsibilities, the responsibility follows you. It lingers behind you. And us, all our life, we're just trying to run away from it. We think something's better somewhere else. Not knowing that all roads lead to what? Our duties, Hashem, our responsibilities. So why do we run? Huh? Why do we run? Because we don't believe. You said usually we do believe, just listen carefully. Different topic. Get off the phone, you'll you'll be part of the be part of the shoe. Why do we run away from what is our responsibility? That's my question. Huh? Why do we run? Because we don't want to work hard. We don't want to toil. We don't want to do what's right. We want the easy way out. The guy can easily say, when he gets drafted in an army, Oh, I'm chole nefesh. I'm sick in the head. He starts hitting himself on the, on the wall. <laughs> hitting himself. The guy says, Oh, he's mamash. He's retarded. Patul, exempt. Instead, what does he say? He loses his hands and feet and says, I'm gay, I'm proud. I have pleasure. Why? Because I did it for my brethren. Now, we don't need to go to such a degree of losing our body parts, Rahman al Itzlag. We just need to do what Hashem wants us to do. And why does He want us to do it? Our benefit. Because He knows this is what we need in order for the world to sustain itself. Hashem created this world in a in like an oxymoron kind of state of mind. What's the oxymoron? As much as we need to fix this world, if we don't fix it the proper way, we'll just go down. It's amazing how He created this world. So we have to understand not to run away from our responsibilities, but to take action. By taking action, you automatically are starting to fulfill your responsibilities and duties on this world. What's taking action? Doing things that are uncomfortable. Schedule. Torah mitzvot. Schedule. Shurei Torah. Schedule. Shachrei Mincha Schedule. Sniut. Schedule. 
everything, kashrut, this has to be in our mind. It's not that I'm a robot. I'm not a robot. I'm the manufacturer of the robot. That's what it is. But then it becomes daily and you feel like... Oh! So how do you break it that it shouldn't be? It shouldn't be robotic? How do I, how do I make it that it shouldn't be into a robotic? You have to enjoy when you're doing it. And how do I enjoy when I'm doing it? When you learn about it. If you're not going to learn about it, you're not going to find an enjoyment. The reason why Tzedekim enjoy doing mitzvot is because they understand it, because they learned about it. And it's not just learning what the Gemara and what does the Torah say. It's also learning what the Torah tells us, what the Pimut, what's the inside meaning behind it. What effect we actually do. When a woman is Tzanua, when she's Tzanua, she's actually emulating the Sfira of Malchut to the highest level. What's Malchut? Kingdomship. A king cannot be outside. The king must have gates. It must have guards. It must have bodyguards. It must have things that will uh, hover around it in order to protect it. When a woman tsanu, what is she actually saying? I have that protection. I'm betara. I'm good. I'm modest. When I walk on the face of the of this earth, people know that I am someone that's I'm a bat melech. I'm the daughter of Hashem. That's how it is. When you put on tefillin, you wear your tzitzit, you know one thing. I'm doing the Ton Hashem right now. I'm doing what HaKadosh Baruch wants me to do. I like it, I don't like it, it's hard, it's not hard, it's irrelevant. No one asks you if it's hard. Emotions go to the trash can. That's in everything, Rabbi. Correct? Why Correct? Emotions? Why, emotions? Why you have emotions? Yeah. To turn your emotions into godliness. The point of your emotions is to reach a level of simcha. Simcha is the highest emotion. That's already a shura I want to talk about in Sukkot time. But simcha is the highest emotion. The reason why you have kas and kabdanut and, and, uh, and all these different uh, midot, all these bad and good, is only to get to one thing. The ultimate midah is simcha. Not simcha, I'm high and I'm jumping and <laughs> everyone like, I'm so happy. You're not happy, you're a fool, you're goofy. That's not happiness. Happiness is a feeling you can't explain with words. When a person is walking down the aisle and he's marrying off his child, hopefully he's happy that he's marrying off the child. How come they're crying? Are you sad? Why are you crying? No, he's in such a state of happiness that already physical reflection of emotion is invalid. It's not there. That's real happiness. Real happiness is leaving, going into a different ecstasy without even acknowledging what's going around, around you. And that's the level we have to reach when we do our mitzvot. That's the level we have to reach whenever we do anything. Well, that's difficult. And ever since it's not. But if all you left, you're going to say it's difficult, are you ever going to do it? Yeah. Right? When you started in cash advance, was it hard in the beginning? Did you quit? Are you making deals? Yeah. Are you making deals? Yeah. That's it. You could have quit. You could have said, I'm not making the deal a week past, two weeks, whatever. Ah. He didn't. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. I'm going to take it the way it is. How come he stays for that and he finds uh, excitement for that? And for doing Torah that you don't? Because you don't care. You don't care about the Torah. You care about the money more. No matter what excuse you're going to tell me, that's the answer. And what's my proof? Because if you can stick for the money, you care about that more. So who's in fault? Yourself. We are in fault. We are our own devils. We create our own problems. So we're going into we're going into Rosh Hashanah. What are we going in for? To continuously living this dying and not uplifting life. This drag on to our heads. Is that what we're going to continue? What's the point of it? There's no point in Rosh Hashanah. Then. There's no point. The point of Rosh Hashanah is to accept, not just more, but to accept it with such an abundance that no matter what happens, you're not going to leave it. I know a guy for the past 40 years is still accepting the same thing. Didn't grow up. He's still a child. 
That's exactly what we have to do. We have to accept and take it and go with it forever. We already accepted it. Before we came down to this world, we accepted everything. We took it. We, we swear on it in our blood. So Hashem loves us. And He gives us another chance, and another chance, and another chance, and another chance, and another chance. You have a worker, right? Say you're a, uh, you own a barbershop. And this worker, every time a client sits in his chair, Oy not only doesn't that client pay you, you lost the client for life. After how long are you going to fire him? Three, four, three. Three times, right? Bye-bye. How many times does Hashem rehire you? A billion. Every single day. Every single second. Every single second Hashem rehires you. Just for that, just to think about that, how could you not want to serve him? And instead we find only excuses after excuse after excuse after excuse. Why? Because to find excuse feels better. It's easier. We're not here to do things that are easy. If things had to be done easy, God would have created you an angel and called it a day. Finish. He would create you in an environment where you're like, like the Amish. Hashem put you specifically in this community with this kind of diversity for one reason and one reason only. Because you're supposed to have all the hardest, difficult challenges, know the truth and overcome the truth. Overcome the evil. That's why you're in this community. That's why I love wherever I live. I love the fact that I was born into this place. Why? Because with all the things around me, what I could have picked and how I can chose and pick in my life and go in different paths and all the connections I know, I still dropped everything and said Torah Mitzvah. The guy that's born in a Haredi environment 24-7, not only his parents Haredi, but his community is Haredi. He looks at us as Goyim. He thinks he's living the life. He thinks he's going to in his eye. I laugh. I said, if you, would be born, if you would be here for one hour, you wouldn't last a day. You would run. You would take your Straimlach and run away. You would run. Right. And us instead... Hey, hey, don't get to the jokes. You're doing good <laughs> until now. But us... With all the siyatuma, with all the garbage, with all the confusion, with all the hypocr hypocrisy, with all the people that want to be barosh, right? Still the people are standing and sitting there and saying, we want to keep Torah mitzvot to the fullest, not the modern orthodox, which is pure next reform. We want to be Haredi 100% with full Ahavat Yisrael. Full Ahavat Yisrael. The only thing that has a differentiation between a Haredi that's going to hell and a Haredi that's going to Gan Eden is one thing. Ahavat Israel. Because you can keep everything, but if you don't have Ahavat Israel, you're a rotten person. Because if you, if you, if you keep everything, and, and every, in your eyes everyone else is bad, then what's the point of your Torah mitzvah? Now, you can't say, oh, I have Ahavat Israel, I don't need to keep anything, then you're just a fool. What's the limit of the future Loving every Jew, <clears throat> which means not being judgmental. You can't be judgmental. You can't. Assume. You're not allowed. Who are you to judge? Are you God? So how are you judging? Even God doesn't judge. That's something we're another time we'll talk about. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that right now. Instead, what do we do? We find excuses. So you have to ask yourself, what am I taking upon myself that's going to be solid rock? Solid rock. Simple things, but I'm going to do it 100%. I'm not going to fall under the peer pressure of everyone else. What's the punishment if not? What does Hashem say in the sixth parasha? I will keep you out of the land of Eretz Israel. And the Goyim will ask, what are you doing outside of your land of Israel? Not Israel. What are you doing outside of El Israel? What are you doing? And we're going to say because we didn't listen to the Torah God kicked us out. You know why we're in America? You want to know why? Because our ancestors didn't <coughs> keep the Torah. They did? They didn't. If we go real back, they didn't keep it. 
We are the byproduct. We are the by- you don't learn Tanakh. When you learn Tanakh, it makes sense to you. We are the byproduct of ancestors that lived in Eretz Hakodesh that didn't keep Torah mitzvot. We are here now to fix and to clean up history. Correct. Because you still didn't do it 100%. When you do it 100%, we're going to get out of this. We're going to all leave. What's a Jewish mind? Look what a beeper can do. What can a beeper do? A beeper blew up a whole terrorist organization that has been getting built for years. Over two decades they're building that organization. And a beeper blew them up. Amazing. Jewish brain. Amazing. Do you know even what I'm talking about? <laughs> There's a terrorist organization called Hezbollah. They're located in Jordan. And a certain part of Jordan in Lebanon. And they used to, uh, they used to uh, communicate through beepers. So there was uh, one organization that decided to plant bombs in their beepers without them knowing. Can you imagine such a thing? In a beeper. The reason why they use the beeper because you can't track them because it's a beeper. And in the beeper, the manufacturer put a bomb inside. And whenever they were ready to demolish them, they pressed one button, anyone that had the beeper, it blew up. It didn't kill all of them, but it blew up, and everyone was caught who is what terrorist. And the next day, the Jewish army, whatever, it's Machoki, Jewish, not Jewish, so I think it's the Jewish army, went in and Karachi, whatever they were planning for close to 20 years, got demolished within Two days. And you're gonna tell me there is no God? This is a this is a miracle? Like you read in the like you read in like you're reading in the Torah. It's amazing. When I heard this, I, I was like in, me and my kids this Shabbat, we made a whole big joke out of it. We were laughing on the table for like at least an hour. We called it Project Popcorn. Project Popcorn. Because everything popped. It was my kids were on the floor. Imagine someone using the bathroom, suddenly the beeper blows up on them. Like, it's such a gavot. Like, look, you hear these stories in the Tanakh, they couldn't use the restroom, frogs went up their thing, and they did. Imagine you're using, you're, you're on the uh, thing, suddenly, boom! Amazing! Amazing! The next day, what blew up? Their walkie-talkies blew up. <laughs> the third day, everyone was throwing all their electronics out the window. <laughs> the mic- Imagine the microwave would blow up. What's next? The oven's gonna blow up. When a Kaddish Baruch wants to show you that he's here, there's endless ways to show you that he's here. The question is, are you going to wake up or not? So The question is, does a terrorist have to come from next door to blow himself up for you to wake up? Or is it good enough to see it from a thousand miles away? We can not see him, saying, but I'm saying, but how is that a shem if the guy made the thing, the decision? Oh, from a shem. Who? Who knocked that sense into that guy? My grandmother? In the grave, said, Drasitzi, please put the bomb inside the beeper. I guess I should, yeah. The same. Kid about that. What is the probability for that to happen? What is the probability that in all their bombs that they threw to Eretz HaKodesh, it mostly hit on the Goish territory and not on the Jewish territory? What is the probability? That's what I'm playing God. Oh, that can be God, but the beeper is not God, right? <laughs> Everything's God, yes. But I'm saying, it's him, think, the guy thinking, I'm saying. The thought comes from where? The brain. It's from Moshe where? The br- from where? You're telling me every thought that I get is from Hashem. Every single thought. He, no, he's not saying that, he's saying that. Let's say you see something, and because of what you saw, that influenced your decision. The chef can put that in front of you, and that can influence your decision. It's not necessarily him doing it, it's you, but he's guiding, sort of guiding you. No, it's it. not, you know, I'm saying you it know is him. It is, I know it what is. you're saying. Yeah. It's 100% of the Jibor. 101%. Without any doubt in my mind. What more, t- what more do we need? What, how many more miracles do we need to wake up? I think the Jews in the cloud had a very hard year this year. It was extremely difficult. 
question is, what can we do to make sure that will never repeat again? What can we do as a human being that that should never happen again? Every single year, every single year, every single year, every single Jew, heard what I told you? Is responsible for the other one. Every single one. So when you sin, you think you're only hurting yourself. You're not knowing you're also hurting me. And when I do good, I'm not only doing good for myself, I'm also doing good for you. There are days you find such a hit loud, you have such an excitement. Yes. You, you know where that comes from? <clears throat> Someone is doing something good and it's waking up your neshama. That's why when a person, people share energies and you go to an environment, to a room, they share it, you feel it. You feel a sense of, wow, where is that coming from? We have to understand. We have a responsibility. We have a duty. We have to do. It's enough to think. Enough thinking. Doesn't help you. You've been thinking all day. Doesn't help already. Time to do. There's no point of thinking if you're not going to take action. None. I'm just going to think about it, Rabbi. And think about it, it's going to work out. No, it's not. I'm thinking of getting my license. Stop thinking. You want to get it? Yes or no? Yes. Davai, go to your feet. Get your license. It's done. Don't you? Your thoughts lead you to your actions. You're th- correct. Okay. Yeah. Now, there's an idea. Uh-huh. You expand on the idea and you take action. Then, there's an idea and now you're just thinking about it all day and all night. All day and all night. What's the point of that? How do you stop that? Oh, it's a good question. It's a good question. By taking action. Okay. And what if it just takes time? Bro, you said thoughts are more important. One second. You said it last time. One second. I'm going to elaborate what that means. What if you're in a cycle? How do you break If cycle? you can't, that's a good question, but we, she didn't ask that. I think that is. Wait, well, no, that's not what you said. Don't, I don't say it. <clears throat> she said right now, if you're thinking about something, but there's impossible for you to take action on it, what's the point of thinking about it? What if you can't control it? I don't know what to tell you. Okay. That's what she's asking, right? No. She's a quick one. It goes deep, it goes deep. Let me explain something to you how the mind works. Let me explain to you how the mind works. When I was 16, 16 or 15, one of the two, I went to one of my Urbaim and I asked them, I said, I have a problem when I dive it. All the time, the Yetzar likes to play with me. What do I do? So this was his advice to me. He said the brain can only concentrate on one concept at a time. 100%. That's why because you both created our brains. He said the reason why those thoughts are coming in is because your concentration on what you're doing is not to its fullest extent. And if it's gonna be to its fullest extent, automatically those thoughts that wanna come in, they'll get pushed out right away. The problem with us is when we wanna achieve something and we can't, we start to think of what ifs. The what if is deadly. That's deadly, that kills us. That's what drags us down to a pit of in a cycle. You're only in the cycle because you're always thinking about what if. That what if is the biggest problem. Because you're thinking about what if because you can't take action. So you have to ask yourself, in the thought that I have, what can I do to make sure to take this action? Because you're afraid of it. What if it's afraid? It's, it's like someone that takes a test, and now until they don't get the test results, they're in their brain, what if? Can you change it? No. So then why are you killing yourself? Fear, Rabbi, fear. That needs to be changed. Analysis paralysis. That needs to change. Really, it's not there. You're not, you're not listening. I know that's what you're thinking. But that needs to change. Why? Because what are you thinking about? Nothing you can do will help the situation. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing regardless how you will think about it. You can't even take action because you already took the exam. What are you thinking about? I think those thoughts... So afraid you can't even think. It comes from... Yeah. Okay, so thoughts, thoughts come is a is a spiritual or a mental 
uh, characteristic trait which forms into emotion, which forms into action, right? So how do you stop those emotions? You have to always think positive. For example, you take the exam, you don't think about, oh, I already failed, I know it. Gamzul Tova, I passed or not, we'll figure it out. Let's go right to your life. That's it. That's the way you have to think. Even though your whole profession depends on it. Because regardless what's going to happen, it's not going to change. Now again, it's also a very difficult thing to do. But these are things we need to start touching on. If we're not going to start touching on these things, we will be emotional wrecks for the rest of our lives. And this is, this is the basis of why people cannot last in a marriage. is because they're emotionally not totally invested or understand what a marriage is. Marriage is being emotionally invested regardless how I feel or how I want to feel. I deal with the reality in front of me. That's what it is. So we have to break that. If not, you're going to have an emotional wreck marriage. This is a fact. This is not an illusion. No emotions. I never said no emotions. You took that. You said that. You said that. I didn't say that. No, I'm saying that. I'm saying in general. I used to think that way. Okay. No emotions. The only way you can function without having any emotions. That's a robot. Is if you are fully and totally invested in that thing. You and I are working human beings. We're learning human beings, hopefully. We're functioning people of society, correct? We need to make our emotions into a positive, not into inanimate. When we make our emotions into a positive, automatically our service to society will have a greater impact. You don't want to come home and being a, a wrecking ball. Because you'll destroy your kids, you'll destroy your marriage, you'll destroy any friendship you have, and you'll destroy yourself. Who are you wrecking ball? Can you just think one way? Emotional. What emotional? No, it's not what I said. <clears throat> emotional, I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. If you think the world only surrounds you, how you feel, that's the problem. I'm, ass I'm assuming you guys had some sort of conversation about it. That's why you're laughing. No. If you think the world only revolves around you, that's where you start to crash. And that's exactly what marriage is. Nothing is about me and everything is about her. And she has to feel nothing's about her and everything's about him. That's how you have an everlasting relationship. What does the Pekia would say? Taser it's or no? In order, Shehuya Serot so no. In order for him to do his will like your will. In order for God to bend his ratzon, whatever that means, we'll have to talk about that also. His will to your will, you have to first turn your will into his will. That's why the, right, the righteous, the righteous, not the smart, not the talmid chacham, the tzaddik, it's two different things. The righteous, Whenever they would bless or say, it would come true. Why? Because whatever they, however they live their life, they base it on solely on what God wants. <laughs> that means the tzaddik would never pray for himself. Why? Because he accepted the way he needs to live is the way God wants him to live. But when someone comes and says, I need help, that Sadiq knows how to change the reality of the world in order for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to help him. Why? Because that's what he did for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When you change your purpose and your reality to godliness, and that can be you being a regular businessman, automatically HaKadosh Baruch Hu does everything in his power, but he does everything 
to make it that life should go the way you need it to go. But how do you be a businessman and always... Because when you follow business according to Torah, and you have your, your three times a day you daven, and you have your two, three hours a day that you learn, and that you love your wife, and you t take care of your house, and every time you have you're learning Torah, that's how. The problem is not to work. If you're supporting Torah, don't. The pro no, don't, enough. Enough with that. Mm -hmm. Support Torah and also learn Torah. We have to get that out of our mind. We have to get that out of our mind. If we support it, it's good enough. We also have to learn it. It's enough. We have to leave that childish idea. You have to not only support it, you also have to learn it. Because what benefit are you actually getting in this world, and even in the next world, if you don't know how to live your life properly? What? I don't understand this. <clears throat> you gotta invest. You gotta invest in yourself. Wives have to invest in their husbands. Husbands have to invest in their wives. The Parents thing. have to invest in the kids. And you have to invest in yourself. It's never ending, the Torah of Saul. That's so beautiful. <laughs> That's so beautiful. That's <laughs> it. amazing. <laughs> it's so beautiful that it never ends. Imagine I tell you, there's a, dead, there's a, 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 a gap of how much money you can make a year. How would you feel? How would you feel? Very bad, no? Imagine I tell you there's a gap to God's knowledge. How would you feel? What kind of God is this? It's endless. God's chokhmah is endless. His Torah he gave us is endless. Your love to your wife has to be endless. Her love to you has to be endless. It's a beautiful thing. If not, then what's the point of it? It's tough. It's tough. It's so hard. It's so hard. Good things don't come easy. I agree. Yes, you I agree it's hard. But you know what the best thing is? The fact that it's hard, that's why it's so rewarding. The fact that it's difficult to achieve, that's why it's going to be everlasting once you achieve it. It's about the journey. <laughs> that's what we have to understand. If things come easy, it doesn't come good. It never ends up good. It yeah, never ends. Right it never ends up good. Right. We need the struggle. The struggle is healthy. <coughs> struggle is good. Yes. Next time you think, remember that line. Struggle is good. It's something that's been forgotten in this generation. Because we're in the generation of speed. Speed. Videos are what? 15, 20, 30 seconds. Shorts. Right? What is this? Stop. Relax. Embrace it. Meditate on it. Master it. So like going to someone and want to learn a trait overnight. Teach them faster, faster. You crazy? Relax. Embrace it. Understand it. Develop it. That's what we need. You need to develop godliness. And you start small. Understanding what you're saying when you pray. I have, thank you so much. Understanding what you're saying when you pray. Getting involved with godliness. Getting involved with Torah. Doing more volunteer work. Doing more chesed. You gotta do it. What are you wasting your time on your phone? Five hours a day. WhatsApp you're gonna tell me? Six hours a day, <laughs> four hours a day. Come on, just think about it. How much time you waste on your stupid phone? It's, it's really, it's disastrous. It's obnoxious. You know what you can accomplish if you wouldn't be on your phone? You know how many books you can read? You know how much information you can get? Not many things you can figure out about yourself if you would just turn off your phone for 20 minutes a day and just, just start to meditate on goodliness. We don't do it. And we want it. And we say, it's so hard, Rabbi. It's hard. You know why it's hard? Because you don't know what you're doing. If I go right now, right now, you go you take me to a blacksmith. 
right? It makes works with metal. I'm gonna go home and say, yo, how does he work? It's so difficult. What are you doing? Got the temperature. You know? He looks at him. He's laughing. You know what's wrong with you? Oh, I'll teach you. So it's hard for me because I'm an outsider. But it's easy for the person that's doing the work. Same thing. Yeah. It's a lot of it's work. It's hard for you because you didn't do it yet at a full investment. You've been doing it because your Rebbe told you doing it, because your parents told you doing it, because you don't know if you should do it or you shouldn't do it. You're still contemplating. You're in the contemplating stage. You're in the contemplating. You have to stop at the contemplating and say, this is it. Full devotion. That's how we get the greatness. We're thinking, maybe, I want to de- change this, I want to change the world. Stop already with all this. One day at a time. One second at a time. And like that we achieve, achieve the greatness. And this is what this week's parasha is saying. Keep the Torah, it's a covenant for you and me forever. This is our Ketubah. This is our document. God gave this to us. He said, Hare Atem Mikudesh Mikudashim Li. We behold, we as a nation are married to Him, to God. God's not a Him, He's not a Her, but for example, Rabbi Sai, what greater glory is there in your life than to know that God wants to be, have a relationship with you? Is there something greater than that? Imagine the CEO of the company wants you specifically to be his private secretary. And after 50 years, you yourself can open up such a company with so many people. What kind of feeling is that? Amazing! The greatest feeling in the world! He chose me out of all everyone. Get out of here. Nah. Come on! I'm that special? Can't be. But yes, Hashem says every day you wake up, every second your heart beats and your lungs inhale and exhale. Hashem says, I choose you. The guy in the hospital that's dying, he's on his deathbed and he dies right now. Hashem said, I don't choose you anymore. You're done. He's choosing you right now. The question is, are we going to take him? Or are we going to run away? Are, are we going to be the runaway bride or not? Huh? Are we going to be the runaway bride or not? This Rosh Hashanah, make sure to make your decision. Make sure to disassociate yourself from people that are holding you back in your life. Even if they're the best friends of you, but if you know they're holding you back, think twice about your relationship with them. You can't grow when you have negative people around you. You gotta cut them out. Don't think about bringing them up. You're not gonna bring them up. You gotta cut them out. That's for you a very big vayavta It really is. Think about it. We're going into Rosh Hashanah. Hopefully next week we'll talk about really what is Rosh Hashanah. We'll review a little bit of the Mavzor. But remember, this one thing, if you might not be, I'd rather say it now so people should listen. <clears throat> We're anointing and proclaiming that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is our King. Why is that so important? Because if a people, out of their will, out of their will, appoint a King, the King wants the good for the people. And if the king wants good for the people, the king will only do good for us. So we're going into Rosh Hashanah saying, God, we want you to be our king. We don't want nobody else. Nobody. No parliament, no country, no uh, officers, no bodyguards, no one. We want you, you Hashem, to be our king. You. Hashem says, you want that? I'll take care of you. Because if you pick me, I pick you. And that's the point of Rosh Hashanah. That's the point of Musaf. We're anointing God. We're saying, we're proclaiming. We're standing up. And we say, we want you. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad we say. Why we say that? 
Because we're accepting him as our God, as our king, 100%. And every king wants good for his subjects. So when we proclaim him, he does good. But if we're forced and we're in shul saying, wow, I can't anymore. How much longer do I have to stand? What's going on? It's like you're spitting on his face. It's like you're desecrating the point of Rosh Hashanah. Understood? Yes. I hope we have a meaningful Rosh Hashanah. Okay. I hope we're going, we're going into the new year with happiness and a good heart, with a gishmak, with an excitement, with an upliftingness in our brain should be, I can't wait for the next year, I can't wait for now to do better and to do more and to, to plow the field, plow it down. The earth should start trembling when I start walking. The earth should tremble. Wow, he woke up in the morning. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. He's going to put on tefillin. He's going to say kretch time. He's going to pray three times a day. He's going to work. He's going to get, he's going home. Wow. The earth should be elevated by our footsteps. That will only happen if we want that.